Hey guys, today we'll be doing 6.5, solving rational equations and modeling. So we want to solve each of these equations for the variable and then include any restrictions. So our restrictions automatically for this one, we have x does not equal negative 3 or positive 1. If we were to use negative 3 or positive 1, we'll end up with a 0 in the denominator, which that cannot happen. So we start off with that. Um, we are going to multiply across, cross multiply, and now I have x times x minus 1 is equal to 6 times x plus 3, which gives me x squared minus x equals 6x plus 18. I'm going to move everything over to one side so that it's equal to 0, and then I can factor. So we'll subtract the 6x and subtract the 18, which gives me x squared minus 7x minus 18 equals 0. And now I can factor. So I have x minus 9 and x plus 2. So if I distribute that back out, that'll give me my negative 18. If I were to add those two together, will give me my negative 7. Okay, so my x values are 9 and negative 2. So remember, it's the opposite sign. We just take x, x minus 9 equals 0, and then we do the same thing with the 2 as well. All right, let's go ahead and check out the second example. So with this one, we're first going to have to combine the left side of my equation before we'll try cross-multiplying. So I have x plus 2, and then here I have x plus 2 and x minus 2. So I know that I'm going to have to multiply this equation by x minus 2, or this fraction, not equation. Okay, so that's going to get me x times x minus 2 minus 8 all over x plus 2 and x minus 2 is equal to 2 over x minus 2. All right, let's deal with the top of my left fraction, which is x squared minus 2x minus 8 all over x plus 2. x minus 2 is equal to 2 over x minus 2. All right, now I'm going to go ahead and do my cross multiplication. So let's go ahead and come over here. I now have x minus 2 times x squared minus 2x minus 8 is equal to 2 times x plus 2 and x minus 2. All right, so we can start off with, I'm going to go ahead and uh, eliminate x minus 2 on both sides. So if I were to divide by x minus 2, those would cancel out on both sides. So now I have x squared minus 2x minus 8 is equal to 2 times x plus 2. Okay, so now I'm going to factor x squared minus 2x minus 8 because maybe I can eliminate an, the x plus 2 on the other side. And then if not, we can go forward from there. So that means we need to find two numbers that add to negative 2 and two numbers that multiply to negative 8. So if we do negative 4 and positive 2, both of those statements will be true. So that means I have x minus 4, x plus 2 equals 2 times x plus 2. All right, so once again, I have two terms that I can cancel. So I now have x minus 4 equals 2. So if I were to continue to solve for x, I'm just going to go ahead and add 4 to both sides. x equals 6. Beautiful. And I forgot to state what the restrictions were from earlier. So our restrictions, x could not equal plus or minus 2. All right, okay, let's go ahead and move on to number three. So number three, I want you guys to take a second and pause, or yeah, go ahead and pause the video and try this problem out. And then hopefully when you come back, um, I'll probably do it in parts or at least the whole thing and then explain it. So go ahead and try out this problem. 
All right, so I didn't quite finish the problem. I did most of it though. Go ahead and take a look at that. And then if we take a look <clears throat> at this last step here, I went ahead and factored out x squared minus nine, and I noticed that they were the same. So if I were to multiply each side of my equation, so now we're talking about the whole equation, not just um, individual fractions. If I multiply um, each of my equations by x plus three, x minus three, times x plus, and actually I should probably write this on the top because we are multiplying x plus 3, x minus 3. What happens is all of those end up canceling out. So I now have negative x, x minus 9 is equal to 18. So when we have that, it's real nice because then my denominators just cancel and I'm just left with my numerators. So I did factor out uh, the numerator on the left um, to see if there's anything to cancel but then I realized oh look at my denominators I can cancel those out so I'm gonna go ahead and uh, multiply it back in and bring the 18 over so I'm gonna do negative x squared plus 9x minus 18 equals 0 and then I don't want this negative out front so I'm just gonna go x squared minus 9x plus 18 equals 0 all right, so we can go ahead and factor this, and I would get x minus 6 and x minus 3. If I multiply those two numbers together, I get positive 18, and then subtract them or add them together, I get negative 9, which means my x values are 6 and 3. I do need to double check for um, any restrictions, so let's go ahead and figure out what the restrictions are for this one. So x cannot equal positive or negative 3. So therefore, x cannot equal 3 here, so x just equals 6. I think that's kind of what happened with number 2 as well, except for we got, um, except for we didn't have to get rid of anything. All right, let's go ahead and try another example. So once again, I want you guys to try this one out as well. So for this one, um, this is 2 over 1, remember that when you're trying to find those commonalities. <clears throat> All right, I'm going to give you guys, um, go ahead and pause the video, then when you come back, it should be done. All right, so here's number four. Go ahead and take a look at it. Check your work. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at number five. So number five, I know I just had you guys do two that were pretty close to this, but let's go ahead and walk through one more together. So I'm first going to deal with the left side of my equation. So my x squared minus one, I now have x plus one and x minus one. So I just factored it out. Minus three x over x plus four. So there is no common denominator anywhere. So I know I'm going to have to multiply this side by x plus 4 top and bottom and then over here x plus 1 and x minus 1 so both of them all right so I now have in my denominator x plus 1 x minus 1 and then x plus 4, because it all carries over. So now I just have to write out my numerator. So x, 6x squared times x plus 4 minus 3x times x plus 1, x minus 1. All right, so now I can go ahead and start combining and seeing if there's anywhere I can uh, eliminate and things like that. So here, I now have 6x cubed plus 24x squared minus, I'm going to do negative 3x times in our, my first uh, binomial here. So I have minus 3x squared minus 3x, and then it's all being multiplied by x minus 1 still. 
All right. And as I'm getting to the step I'm comparing to the notes I have, and it looks like there was a number that was not printed for some reason. That should be a six there. So this completely changes our answer. So I can, I really apologize about that. Oh, I guess I can't do it that way. So we're just gonna redo this, but it is gonna make it a lot simpler. That's why you always have notes next to you so you can verify. <laughs> I just should have checked a little bit sooner, but that's okay. So we have 6x squared and then x squared minus 16, which is x minus 4 and x plus 4, which makes things so much easier. We can only multiply this side by x minus 4. We don't have to do a whole bunch of stuff now. So I have x minus 4 and x plus 4. Um, in my numerator, I have 6x squared minus minus 3x times x minus 4, and it is all equal to 4 over x minus 4. All right, so now I have 6x squared minus 3x squared plus 12x <coughs> all over x minus 4 x plus 4, and then I have 4 over x minus 4. Okay, let's go ahead and move up here. I notice that I have like terms, so I'm going to go ahead and combine those. I have 3x squared plus 12x all over x minus 4, x plus 4, is equal to 4 over x minus 4. Okay, in my numerator I can factor that. So like we've seen before, sometimes it doesn't always help to factor, but a lot of times it also does, so it doesn't hurt to factor it out. Worst case scenario, nothing happens, but in this case, something does happen. We have a 4 on the top and a 4 on the bottom. So I now have, or plus 4 to be specific, because I have x minus 4. And then over here, I recognize I have x minus 4 on both of my denominators. So those cancel, and I am left with 3x equals 4. I go ahead and divide by 3, so x equals 4 over 3. Oh, and we didn't talk about the restriction, so let's just make sure that those aren't in the way. So x cannot equal plus or minus 4. So beautiful. We can have x equals 4 over 3. So hopefully if you need any more questions on solving, solving those rational functions, um, please make sure you ask your teacher. We watch the video, try the homework, and so on. Okay, systems of linear and rational equations. So now we have, we want to solve the following systems, then check using a graphing calculator. So we have a graph here, if we can graph it. Uh, but we want to go ahead and solve it. So f of x, g of x, that's just another saying y. And since we're figuring out um, the solution, so that's where they're intersecting, I can go ahead and set these equal to one another. So x plus 2 over x minus 1 is equal to 2x. And now we're just right back to where what we have been doing where we are solving. So I'm going to go ahead and cross multiply. So I have 2x times x minus 1 is equal to x plus 2. 2x squared minus 2x equals x plus 2. Let's go ahead and move it up here. And I'm going to move everything onto one side. So I have 2x squared minus 3x minus 2 equals 0. So now I can go ahead and factor this out. And so we want to figure out two numbers that add to negative 3 and multiply to negative 4. So that's going to be negative 4 and positive 1. And remember, then we have to divide by our a value, which is 2. So negative 2, and then positive 1 divided by 2 doesn't change anything. So I can have my factored out terms, which is x minus 2, and then 2x plus 1. 
So that means I have two x values at positive two and then negative one half. Since we are, so those are our x values, since we are trying to find the solution, those are coordinates, x and y coordinates. So therefore I'm going to take these values, plug it into one of my equations, and figure out my y values. So I'm going to use g of x because it does just seem slightly simpler. Sorry, I don't have too much space. Let's let's go ahead and go down here. So I now have 2 times 2, which is 4. So I have one coordinate that is 2 comma 4. And then I'm going to have 2 times negative 1 half, which my 2's cancel, so I am left with negative 1. So I have a solution at negative 1 half comma negative one. So those are my solutions to these two equations. All right, and if we were to draw a rough graph of that, so for this one, um, since it's not perfect lining up and sometimes it can be kind of hard to see on a graph, um, you can always use your graphing calculator to double check. Even if you're super confident with your graphing, it doesn't hurt to understand how to use the graphing calculator and double check those answers. But let's go ahead and make a rough of this. So we have vertical asymptote at negative one, and then horizontal at positive one. And then I know my graphs are going to be here and here. Since they do intersect at specific points, I am going to refine that up a little bit. But there, there's my f of x function. And then g of x is 2x. We all know how to plot those. And I'm, actually, I'm just going to erase this so that I can define it better since we do know where they intersect at. So we have here. Alright, so there's g of x, and I know that my two equations intersect at 2, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, so here, so that part of f of x goes through that point there, and then negative 1 half, negative 1 there, so I can go ahead and draw my graph. Okay, so sometimes when you draw your graphs, it's not super clear. Um, so for this one, you might have been fairly certain, but for this second point where we have that fraction, you might have not been 100% sure. So therefore, using your graph and calculator, being able to solve, to double check all these things are um, is a good way to make sure you know exactly what you're doing. So you're not just relying on one method, you have um, three different methods that you can choose from. So why are the x-coordinates of the points where the graphs intersect the solutions? Um, if they equal one another, then that's where the x's are equal and where the y's are equal. So therefore, that's why the x-coordinates are the points where the graphs intersect. All right, let's go ahead and try another one. Okay, so I have these two equations here. I'm going to go ahead and solve them algebraically first so I know exactly what I'm looking at at my graph. All right, so I have, so they're both once again equal to y. So I can set them equal to each other. 5 over x plus 10 minus 3 is equal to x plus 3. And I'm going to go ahead and add this 3 over. So I'm adding 3 to both sides. So that gets rid of this 3. And then I have something to combine it with over here. So it makes, makes things just a little bit easier. So now I have 5 over x plus 10 equals x plus 6. All right, I'm going to go ahead and multiply both sides by x plus 10. So I have my 5 all by itself. And then we're multiplying this side by x plus 10, which will give me x squared minus, or not minus, plus 10x plus 6x plus 60. And then I'm going to go ahead and move my 5 over and combine like terms. So I have 0 equals x squared plus 16x plus 55. All right, so I can go ahead and factor this out. I'm starting to run out of 
room, that will end up with x plus 11 and x plus 5. So if we multiply 11 and 5, we get our 55 and add those two together to get 16. So our two x values are negative 11 and negative 5. So now that I know my x values, I can go and find my y values. So we have a negative 11 plus 3 and then we'll have negative 5 plus 3. So we have 8, or negative 8, here, and then negative 5 plus 3, we have negative 2. So our two coordinate points are negative 11, negative 8, and then negative 5, negative 2. So once again, if you're like, oh, I don't want to graph, unless you absolutely have to graph, of course, it's important to know how to graph these things. But if you're asked just to solve and you don't need to graph it, then you can always use the algebra method. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and graph j of x first. So it's x plus 3. So I have a y-intercept at 3 and then up 1 over 1. Do my best to connect these points properly. There we go without having to draw all the little dots. All right, so there's j of x, and I already know where my point of intersections are, so I know that's that's what I'm going to be looking for when uh, I plot my next graph. So I'm actually, let's go ahead and use orange, and we are going to be intersecting at negative 11, negative 8, so I know it's going to be there, as well as negative 5, negative 2. So those are my two points of intersection that I'm looking for. Let's go ahead and graph h of x now. So I have um, a vertical asymptote at negative 10, and then a horizontal one at negative 3. So now I know my graph is going to go through there as such, and then my graph on this end is going to go down through there. All right, and then if you need to, you can always double check on your graphing calculator. Make sure that it does actually line up that way. All right, we're going to go ahead and skip number three, and we're just going to go ahead and try number four. Let's go ahead and take a look at number four. Alright, so let's go ahead and set them equal and solve algebraically first. So I have negative 4x all over x squared minus 5 is equal to negative 1. So I'll go ahead and multiply both sides by x squared minus 5. Since I'm multiplying by negative 1, I know it's just going to change all my signs. So I did those two steps together. All right, and then I'll go ahead and move all my terms over to one side. I'm going to move my x squared and my 5 um, just so that my x squared is positive. Minus 4x minus 5 equals 0. All right, and then if we factor, I end up with x minus 5 and then x minus 1. So my x values are positive 5 and positive 1. And I could plug it in, but since I know that no matter what my x values are, it has to equal negative 1 for r of x, my points of intersection are 5 comma negative 1 and 1 comma negative 1. Because r of x has to go across negative 1. So therefore, any point of an intersection, y has to equal negative 1. So we know we're intersecting here, as well as intersecting at 1, which is there. All right, so let's go ahead and graph. So this one has three sections. And we have a two vertical asymptotes at negative 2 and positive 2. All right, and then we're going up on this, or we have, can't forget about our horizontal asymptote at zero. That's important to remember. So we're going up this way, and then in the center it crosses. And 
and then it goes down over here. So it is okay for it, for um, the middle part of the graph to cross the horizontal asymptote. So remember that is okay. So we have that curved shaped graph in the center. All right. Let's go ahead and go to the next example. So five, if each of the following expression is defined, um, which is equivalent to x minus one? So that just pretty much means we need to eliminate as many possible answers as we can. So for example, a, we have an x minus one on the top and bottom. So therefore it equals x plus one, not x minus one. So it can't be a. Um, let's go ahead and check out c. So it's using division. If it'll let me scroll, hold on. It's using division, so I know that this x minus one all over x minus two is actually multiplied by x minus two over x minus one, because it's the reciprocal, right? So I'm gonna go ahead and kind of ignore this, so I, just so I don't have to rewrite it. But if you want to, it doesn't hurt to rewrite it. My x minus twos cancel, and my x minus ones cancel, leaving me once again with x plus one. That's not what we're looking for, so it can't be C. All right, B, it's already in multiplication. We don't have to flip anything. Get rid of my x plus two, x plus one, and I am left with x minus one. So therefore, B is my answer. And if you really want, needed to, you can check out D. Um, since it is addition, we cannot eliminate anything, um, but my denominators are already the same. So I have x plus one plus x minus one all over x plus two, which will give me 2x over x plus 2, which does not give me x minus 1. All right, six, we want to write the end behavior of the function f of x. Um, so in order to figure that out, we need to find the horizontal asymptote. So we need to focus on the horizontal asymptote, which is at negative 5 over 2. So my horizontal asymptote is at negative five over two. So what that means is as X approaches either positive or negative infinity, Y is gonna be approaching negative five over two. So if we think about a graph, right? If our horizontal asymptote is there, um, you know, it's gonna get really close to one side or the other and it's never gonna pass it. So as y approaches either of those, uh, y will approach negative five over two. All right, let's take a look at seven. We wanna translate the graph of f of x equals six x plus seven over x plus one. One unit down and four units left. Write the equation after the translation. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and do this division. And so I'm gonna use synthetic division. So negative one, and then we have six and seven. Bring down the six, I have negative six, and I'm left with one. So what this means is I now have one over x plus one plus six. And now I can apply my one unit down, so minus one, and then four units to the left, so plus four. So remember, left and right is always gonna be the opposite symbol um, when we're in this form. So I now have one over x plus five plus five. All right, and then our last one, write an equation of a function that has solutions with the rational function graphed below that have x coordinates of one and negative one. So I'm gonna first pay attention to what I have for one and negative one. So negative one, here, positive one is there, and we need to create a function that goes through these points. So I'm gonna pay attention to what my slope is between these two points, because we only, we, we're just gonna have a um, linear line. So therefore, we can go ahead and figure out what the slope is. So one, two, three, four, so up four, right two, so my slope is four over two, which is just two. So I know my slope is two, so up two over one. And then I have to identify my y-intercept. So my y-intercept looked like it's negative five. So I have y equals two x minus five. 
Alrighty. If you have any further questions, please sure to ask your teacher. Rewatch this video as many times as you need and have a wonderful rest of your day.